So the history of the Gary Oaks in Oak Harbor. Starting off, we have Gary, our Oak Harbor Gary Oak Society mascot guy made out of real Gary Oak acorns, stems, and moss from a tree to represent us. The history, history is defined as the whole series of past events connected with someone or something. And so when, as a rule, if you live in an environment like ours, and I'm speaking for myself, we don't give a lot of thought to the beauty that's around us, you know, on a sunny day, like the Olympic and Cascade views and the water, sparkling water or our Gary Oak trees. Washington state is known as the evergreen state. And we talk a lot about the conifer trees, but we don't necessarily talk about the Gary Oaks that are our only native Oak tree. And so we are connected to our landscape in, in a, um, a strong way, whether we realize it or not. And so let's talk about our majestic Gary Oak trees and the history. Oak Harbor was a village um, populated by a sub tribe of the lower Skagit tribe for many thousands of years. And the native people cared for the environment and the Oak trees thrived and how they cared for the environment around the Oak trees was was really to keep the chemis bulbs thriving. The chemis bulbs were essential carbohydrates in their diet. They would, they, they are a wildflower that blooms. It has a beautiful blue blossom. And when the bloom dies back, then they would dig up the bulb and roast that like an onion, like you would eat an onion today. And so um, they could trade the chemis bulbs. Um, again, a very important, uh, uh, part of the Gary Oak ecosystem. And so they called this place, um, I'm, I'm, no, I probably won't pronounce it properly, but the village was called Klatolechski. And it remained that way until the donation land claim guys arrived. And those were the three uh, main donation land claim gentlemen who arrived after meeting somewhere in California at the end of the gold rush, they heard news of this beautiful place called Whid Whidbey Island that they wanted to come explore. So Martin Tafson, Summit, um, let's see, um, Clement Sumner and Ulrich Friend arrived in 1851 and they each took up their plots of land. The legal description for Martin Tafson's donation land claim, part of it said, uh, let's see, 1851 Martin Tafson legal description of his part of the claim that it contained 170 acres of prairie and oak openings. I believe they each got 320 acres in, in their parcel. Um, also of note is the Island County A World Beater book first published in 1911 that has a paragraph about Oak Harbor scattered over the town site are beautiful oak groves affording refreshing shade and pleasing to the eye. Now we know when the donation land claim gentlemen arrived, there were still acres and acres of oaks. Dr. Richard Lansdale was the first physician on the island and he is the one who is credited with naming Oak Harbor in honor of the Gary Oak trees. So the story is that Dr. Lansdale uh, tried to apparently jump the claim of Martin Townsend when Martin Townsend was off, off island um, for a time. And, but anyway, when he returned, it was clear that it was Martin Townsend's claim and Dr. Richard Lansdale moved on. And by the census in Island County of 1853, only 195 non-native people were recorded, sadly. So speaking of that, oak tree burials, native oak tree, uh, native burial canoe in Old Gary Oak Tree. This was a the caption underneath this photograph uh, by, that is associated with Ernest Hancock. Um, also a uh, history of Whidbey Island of this author was George Kellogg. George Kellogg was also a physician. The dead were wrapped in mats, placed in a canoe and placed high in a tree. So in this photo, you can see this giant Gary Oak tree trunk here and a man is leaning against the trunk. He's got a hat on. And then right here, 
is the burial canoe. It sticks way out to this end. So again, the burial canoe all the way over. Obviously, this is a very disrespective view, <clears throat> disrespectful view. Um, but someone thought it was important enough to capture the photo. What we know about Ernest Hancock, he lived from 1854 to 1924, is that he first came to Whidbey Island in 1879, so in his 20s. And then he left and went back to his wealthy uh, family tobacco plantation in Virginia, uh, but came back to Whidbey Island in 1883. So obviously he was, was pulled in by the beauty that surrounded him. He bought 845 acres of land and married the daughter of a Coopville sea captain and became very prominent. He and his family became prominent in the community and his offspring continued to live in the island community to this day. So this is an event, this Irish tragedy that happened in the early days of Oak Harbor that has to do with a Gary Oak tree. Three members of one family drowned in 1864, Grace and David McCrowan and Maurice O'Leary. And the, for the small community at the time, the, the pioneer community was utterly devastated by, by these deaths. Uh, Maurice O'Leary, I think, was only in his 30s. Grace was in her 40s, and David was only about 16. And what happened was they went to an auction in Coveland, which was what Santa Fuca was called at the time in the middle of, of Whidbey Island. And they came back, uh, they were coming back, and a squall blew up, and the wind uh, tipped over their heavy laden canoe, and there were no survivors. Now, Grace's body did not wash up right away. Oh, of note, this is, um, this photo is from one of the tombstones and you can see the Gary Oak leaves and the Gary Oak acorns displayed. So um, David and Maurice's bodies washed up and they were buried fairly quickly in the, in the family cemetery, which is a private pioneer cemetery in Oak Harbor but Grace's body remained missing for a while. And finally, when her body was discovered, she was laid to rest under the Gary Oak tree. Now I think this cross in this photo is where Grace's body was buried. But prior to her death, Grace had been out walking with her daughter and remarked that someday when she passed on, she would really, really like to be buried underneath that Gary Oak tree. So in the end, she got her wish to be buried under a tree. Martin Tasson's story is also tied to Gary Oak trees. And what happened with Martin? He was originally from Norway. And he, uh, as I mentioned, filed a donation land claim in Oak Harbor and eventually took a Native American woman for a wife. And they had two little boys. And when the little boys were small, Martin had to go to Olympia for supplies. And at that time, the waterways were the major routes. They didn't have roads. And so he took his canoe and went to Olympia. Before he left, he told his wife, if the boys get sick, because there were there's was always the threat of illness, but um, particularly smallpox and measles. He said, if the boys get sick, do not take them to the native shaman or, or the village people, um, the uh, Skagit village people for help. Take them to the doctor. Well, you can imagine what happened. They became very ill and she was alone and at, at some point reached out to her support community, her native people, and the boys did die. And when Martin returned, he flew into a rage and kicked her out of the house and never did remarry, sadly. Um, but the, and he, he left Oak Harbor a number of times. Um, he, but he always returned. The mystery is where did Martin bury his sons? Because Dorothy Neal's book by Canoe and Sailing Ship says that he buried the boys under a Gary Oak on the hillside above his cabin. Well, his cabin stood somewhere on what is now Southeast 9th Street in Oak Harbor. And at some point, these big condos were built. They're called Sea Watch condominiums. This was a Gary Oak tree. 
and was turned into a sort of this hybrid lighthouse sculpture because the name of the condos is Sea Watch. But there's a tribute to Martin right here. There's a little cabin carved into the stump. I don't know if you can see that very well. Across, so that tree is no longer standing. Across the street from Sea Watch are these beautiful, very old, large Gary Oak trees adjacent to what used to be the old Lutheran church and is now Calvary Chapel. So the question is, where on the hillside were those boys buried? So we know that when the early pioneers came, they considered all the environmental resources very expendable. And so the, the oaks weren't valued as the nut trees that they are. Uh, it was their lumber that was really prized. This is a Gary Oak tree and you can see the beautiful heartwood, the dark wood in the center, and then the sapwood around it. In his book, Richard White's book, Land Use, Environment and Social Change, The Shaping of Island County, Washington, Mr. White talks about the importance of lumber as an industry. And he says, the oak trees of Oak Harbor, a relatively scarce species, were crucial to the new timber industry. Americans recognized oak as a traditional shipbuilding timber at a time when men still questioned the usefulness of the abundant fir, hemlock, spruce, and cedar. Between 1858 and 1861, workers constructed at least five vessels at Utsalati and Oak Harbor. Utsalati is on Kamano Island, and we'll talk about that in a future slide. Also, also, Dorothy Neal commented in her book by Canoe that um, logging was a way of life on Whidbey Island and a matter of survival for many family men. Excuse me while I take a drink. In that book, on that page, Dorothy Neal also has a photo of a, um, a skid road, which is Regatta Avenue going down to where East Pioneer Way meets and there at the water, you could see the logs coming down. You know, one thing I just remembered, I forgot to mention about the original Skagit village in, uh, in Oak Harbor. If you wanna learn more about the Native American history, you can go to www.islandhistory.org and scroll down to about midway through that page on the right hand side there's a picture of two Native Americans and when you click on that it's an it's an interactive display and you can see where some of the tribal villages were what they were called and what we know about those sites. All right, so this is um, Smith Park and Smith Park is the largest public oak grove in Oak Harbor and it was part of the original Tafson donation land claim purchased by Captain Ed Barrington. He was a sea captain who settled in Oak Harbor and his descendants still live here on Whidbey Island. And, but this land was used by people as a park in the pioneer times well before the incorporation of the city of Oak Harbor. It was known as Oak Park or Oak Park Free Camp. In 1894, there was a huge 4th of July celebration that made the history books. They held that in the park and it drew people from all over the region. The town of Oak Harbor was later platted by Ed Barrington's widow, Christina Barrington in 1889, but she made sure to emphasize that this plot of land where the park was was to be set aside and kept as a park for the people. Eventually the land went out of her hands into uh, Mr. Lewis Smith and Mr. Smith eventually donated the land to the city in 1916. And the deed states the property was given in consideration of the community to beautify and maintain as a free public park. I think this photo was probably taken about the 1920s um, and it's probably difficult for you all to see from your end but I've looked at this photo with a magnifying glass and they're all wearing like this gentleman here they're all wearing some kind of um, ribbon on their chest like a white ribbon you can see the man standing next to this oak tree you can see his ribbon a bit more I don't know what that was, if it was a club, a, a political affiliation, or I even wonder if it was a temperance union meeting, but I can't be certain. 
at any rate, Smith Park is dearly beloved park still um, available for anyone to enjoy today. This building is adjacent to Smith Park and still standing. It was owned by Lawrence Paul, who went by LP Byrne. Uh, Mr. Byrne was quite the Oak Harbor businessman. He was an Irishman and he owned a wharf, a warehouse, a store and a hotel in Oak Harbor. And unfortunately, and most of them, so the waterfront and then East Pioneer Way was the location of those places. But in 1920, there was a big fire that burned that whole section, that business section of Oak Harbor to the ground. And the only thing Mr. Byrne had that survived was this beautiful house. I think this probably was taken about 1890 um, based on the horse and buggy. But you can see a whole lot of oak trees here, here and here. This is where Midway Boulevard goes by now. So those were all cut down. I appreciate this quote by Alexander Smith, trees are your best antiques. And in Oak Harbor, we don't have a lot of old wooden structures like this beautiful home still standing, but we do have a lot of oak trees still standing and they are our best antiques. This is a photo of the Boss and Mueller family picnic. I'm thinking again about 1920 or so. Many of Oak Harbor's celebrations and recreational activities were carried out nearby or underneath Gary Oak Trees. So this big family were enjoying themselves on a fine spring day. I'm thinking spring because you can see there's a little bit of leaf out in these Gary Oaks, but not much. And so there they are, um, many generations, the older folks sitting on chairs and then the, the, the young adults all around here and, and lots of small ones, including a baby in a baby carriage. The Mueller family was displaced later on when the Navy bought their waterfront farm. Their large farmhouse, another small house and outbuildings were moved to a location adjacent to Crescent Harbor Road when the Navy came in to Whidbey in 1942, and as was the story of many, many Whidbey Island farmers, North Whidbey Island farmers. This was a passenger ferry called the Acorn. You can see the name Acorn right here, Oak Harbor Utsalati Ferry. This went, uh, provided service between Oak Harbor near Mariner's Cove and the north end of Camino Island and it ran from 1915, I'm guessing, till about when the bridge, Deception Pass Bridge opened, which was in 1935. The word Utsalati is a Native American word, and it means land of the berries. This picture is of the First United Methodist Church in Oak Harbor, no longer standing because it burned down from um, an act of arson, I'm thinking in the late 60s, early 70s. It was rebuilt, the church was rebuilt on the same location, but you can see a great big Gary Oak there and beyond you can see the beautiful waterfront. This is another church in Oak Harbor that had Gary Oak trees on its campus and this was called the Christian Reformed Church in Oak Harbor and this structure is still standing and it's known as the Whidbey Playhouse. Now this photograph was um, taken by Clifford Ellis and Clifford Ellis and his son went around the Pacific Northwest taking pictures in small towns and selling them then as postcards that people could buy and send off to friends and relatives after having visited here. Another Clifford Ellis photo. This one at the bottom says Gary Oak Giant native oak tree, Oak Harbor, Washington. And this significant landscape oak remains. It's been listed as a class B heritage tree with a height of 55 feet and a crown spread of 62 feet, estimated age 220 years old or more. And this was part of a Gary Oak heritage tree program the Oak Harbor city paid for in 2003. This is a page from the Oak Harbor High School yearbook called The Acorn. It's still called The Acorn today. This was from the class of 1958. And I thought it was significant in that it shows the inherent value the Gary Oak tree has to the community and, and particularly to these young people. And 
it's too small for me to read the the fine print as to who the the um, senior class officers were. But I looked through the book and I recognized many, many of those names of people who are older now. They're in their 70s, pushing 80s, and but they still live in Oak Harbor, many of them. Um, someone did this artwork of the Gary Oak Tree silhouette. And then they published this poem, Trees Against the Sky by Robert Service. It says, oaks against the sky, ramparts of leaves high hurled, staunch to stand and defy all the winds of the world, stalwart and proud and free, firing the man in me to try and again to try, oaks against the sky. So again, 1950s, local families growing up among the oaks, my family being one of them. And I think it, it brings that personal perspective to this presentation um, and a way of looking at the oak trees. So I'm sharing that. This is my family. This, my name was Laura Shepherd. This is Evangeline Shepherd, my grandmother, and her husband, Clarence Shepherd. He went by Shep. My oldest, the oldest brother, my uncle Gary, my dad, looking very dapper in his suit and bow tie there. Looks like he had a little trouble getting his hair to, <laughs> to lay flat. And then my, my uncle Maury. So when these boys were growing up, my grandmother lived on a, a very thickly lined street with Gary Oak trees that used to be called 400 Avenue East. We're gonna talk about that street coming up. And they lived in a big brick house there and the boys were probably a little bit of holy terrors around the neighborhood. They loved to have acorn fights with neighbor kids. They built a tree house in one of the big oaks around them. Um, Myself, I can remember playing and jumping in piles of oak leaves at grandma's house when I was a little one. And my grandma would pay my sister and I one cent per acorn that we picked up in her lawn. And then we would use the money and we would go down to the corner store. It was called Maston's Variety Store. And that historic sign for Maston's still stands um, on East or on Pioneer Way. We would take our, our money from the acorns and we would go buy candy and we were just happy as little clams. It was the best experience ever. Also, I've heard from other families growing up in Oak Harbor of swinging a hammock between two sturdy backyard oak trees. The hammock would go up around mm, um, Memorial Day and they'd take it down at Labor Day. So they'd have it there all summer to just relax in and enjoy. Also, my uncle Maury fell out of the Gary Oak tree that was close to his bedroom window. He was trying to, you know, get out of having an early curfew. He wanted to go have a good time. So he, he fell out of the tree and then that was the end of that story. So this particular tree, this was 400, it was called 400 Avenue East in Oak Harbor. And then later on with 911 um, address enhancements, the street was changed to Southeast 8th Street. But at this time, September 1962, it was called 400 Avenue East. And the Seattle Times had a Sunday publication called Charmed Land. <clears throat> and the Charmed Land ran this piece. It was called Oak Harbor's Charming Oaks. And they had a little small paragraph. This was, this was on the exterior of the magazine, Sunday Magazine. In the inside, they just had a little, very small paragraph talking about Oak Harbor's oak trees and how noteworthy they were, even in 1962. And Times artist Peter McAllister painted this watercolor illustration. This is the tree that's in the middle of the street that's still standing if you're going from east to west or west to east on Southeast Avenue. Dorothy Neal famously wrote a poem, we're going to talk about Dorothy later, called Oak Tree Diplomacy in 1993, and she saved the old oak from being cut down. This is Everdina Douglas. Everdina Douglas, the Douglas family came to Oak Harbor in the 1870s, again, I believe an Irish family, and Everdina had a small bungalow on Midway Boulevard. This is Everdina in her younger years. She's standing outside facing, this looks like the Whidbey Playhouse Parsonage. 
with some oaks here. And this is Everdina in her older years. But at some point, Everdina sold the property to a developer and two large apartment buildings were built. This was the spring, late spring, early summer of 1990. She had at least two really big, beautiful Gary Oak trees that were cut down and removed for the apartments. Now, this is very significant because one of Everdina's descendants, I think her great great grandson, Mike Douglas, who still lives in Oak Harbor and is the manager of the Make Belief Cemetery, Mike Douglas stood up when the community just went wild. In August of 1990, the Whibby News Times had a public, um, published a, their um, title on the, the cover of the newspaper, Save the Oaks, Crowd Demands. There was standing room only audience and City Hall was just packed. And one of the first people to step up to the podium to defend the Oaks was Mike Douglas. Mike said he was shocked at the destruction of the property and of the oak trees. And he urged the council to proclaim these trees as historic. Old timers like Dorothy Neal, who we'll talk about, members of the Oak Harbor Garden Club and former city council members also spoke up. Mike asked the Island County Historical Society for help. Island County Historical Society proposed a draft of a Gary Oak Tree Protection Code to be written and it was written. So this was definitely a turning point in that tension between housing shortages and building condos and apartments in Oak Harbor, uh, in Southeast Oak Harbor where most of the Gary Oak Trees are and what, what's to be done. What's, what can we do to help these trees survive? If someone needs to build, can they push things back a little? Can they rearrange the footprint of the building so that everybody can get their way? This is a, another Clifford Ellis photograph in this shot here. I'm not exactly sure what vantage point he's taking the photo from. Um, again, this is titled Native Oak Trees, Oak Harbor, Washington, and he's looking out towards the bay. So we need to talk about Jerome Ely's Gary Oak Trees. Jerome Ely was born in 1844. He died in 1921. This is Jerome right here. He fought uh, in the Civil War with the Pennsylvania 57th Infantry, and he was injured by a musket ball that shattered his right lower leg. And while he was recuperating, he decided that he was going to come west and he healed and came west in 1873. And he bought a piece of land in the heart of Oak Harbor. And so they had a homestead there. And on that homestead property were Gary Oak trees. Now I made a collage. This is actually a photo of a collage giving tribute to Mr. Ely. Jerome Ely was an Oak Harbor pioneer and veteran of the Civil War. He was the first mayor of Oak Harbor and the first postmaster. His farm was located in the heart of Oak Harbor. And while the old family home no longer exists, the Ely legacy oaks continue to grow and thrive on Southeast Fidalgo Avenue. So in this photo are two trees. They look, it looks like one tree. Oops, there we go. So it, they're actually two, three trunked, oak trees. They serve as living monuments to Mr. Ely's service to the city and as an invaluable heritage and as invaluable heritage oaks to our community. So one of the ways that this, these trees are, are very significant is that most of the oak trees in Oak Harbor, if you look around, are single trunked or dual trunked. So to have two, three trunk trees side by side is, is really special. And this was at the entrance to Mr. Ely's homestead. You, the concrete steps still survive. You can find those. And so I'd like to think that those were, were left undisturbed because at some point he recognized the value of the trees and the beauty of them. Now the property is, is um, privately owned. And in the mid 2000s, there was plans to develop that property and the trees were supposed to be severely pruned to make way for the development. And 
um, a citizen committee spoke up to advocate for the trees, but the, um, their plea was, was turned down. Um, and but what actually happened was the economic downturn in 2007 and just kind of dried the whole project up. And so the trees were never pruned. And Jerome Ely's son, Vernon Ely, who lived on the property, later donated one of the rental houses on that homestead site to the city of Oak Harbor. And it became Oak Harbor's first food bank and it still survives, the help house. And so you can see the help house from this angle, you can see the help house behind this low shed here. There's the help house. There's the, probably their prize sheep. And then this is a giant Gary Oak. That one is no longer standing. But that's the story of Mr. Ely and his proud legacy. Now we can't have a discussion about the history of Gary Oaks without talking about the grand old oak tree at the Oak Harbor Post Office. Now this, um, Gary Oaks can live for 500 years or so. And um, this tree was 330 years old when it was cut down. It was cut down in 2014. This was the former Keister family farm site. They called it Keister Marsh. There was a, a saltwater slough that before the streets were made and it was all filled in. And the, the Keister family had a farm there. <clears throat> and the kids used to play on the tree like it was their jungle gym. It was their, their play set. Or if they had to run away from an angry bull, they could run to the tree and jump on, up on the branches. And, and Grandpa Keister, Herman Keister, was very proud of this tree and he would measure it annually. When it was cut down, let's see, I beg your pardon. When uh, the last time they measured it, it had a 68 inch trunk diameter. That was 2003. It was estimated to be the third largest in the state. It was cut down in March of 2014. And the way that, that it was cut down remains very controversial to this time. And that is the decision. So a few heavy limbs, two heavy limbs had fallen spontaneously. Um, right now it's the Oak Harbor Post Office, like I mentioned, and there's a parking lot right here. And um, so the mayor at the time, Mr. Dudley, decided that that was too great of a liability and um, that the tree needed to come down, but he made that decision was made in secret in violation of the Open Meetings Act. And the, um, when the morning that the tree was cut down, they, they chose a Sunday very, very early in the morning when light was just breaking and the community was, was not involved in that in any way. And so the community really mourned. They mourned that tree that was a landmark tree. It was a symbol of our community and I saw a YouTube video uh, about a community in Basking Ridge, New Jersey that had a similar experience. They had a 600 year old uh, white oak, different species. But um, if you are interested, it's called Life of 600 Year Old Oak Tree Comes Full Circle. You can find that on YouTube, it's about eight minute long. The contrast between what these people in New Jersey and Basking Ridge experienced and what Oak Harbor experienced is very different because those people were told ahead of time the tree had been cabled and they were they were told and then they were allowed to stand back safely and watch the whole thing as it, as it happened. Um, so next, Dorothy Neal. Dorothy Neal was um, a real, um, active lady in the Oak Harbor community. She was born in 1909. She died in 2004 here in Oak Harbor. There's a plaque near the front of City Hall that she wrote that says, long may they live the Gary Oaks. From acorns they grow, sowing seeds for the town we know. And there's also a plaque on a bench in Oak Harbor on the waterfront that says in part regarding Dorothy, Mother, she was a mother with a deep faith, a photojournalist and columnist. She was very a long term writer for the Whibby News Times, and she had her own column called Top of the Morn. She was a historian. She published several history books and a Gary Oak preserver. She served on parks board, school board, city council, and she played in the community band. So this is a photo of Dorothy Neal 
another collage that I put together. And Dorothy in the photo is standing with her hand against a Gary Oak tree, very fondly. So she wrote this poem about the tree in the middle of Southeast 8th. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But she was also involved with Holland Happening, which is our cultural celebration of springtime in Oak Harbor. And back in the day, they used to create a tile that they would then sell to help raise money and continue the funding for Holland Happening. So Dorothy Neal in 1991 created this tile. It says Holland Happening, Oak Harbor, and smack dab in the middle of the tile, she's got her big Gary Oak tree with its spreading branches. She has a photo of the Neal Water Tower and the barn, which was the roller barn. So both of these structures are still standing. The water tower is on the verge of uh, being put on the historic register, which will be wonderful. And then she's got acorns and oak leaves surrounding the whole photo. So the birth of Gary Oak Society happened in 2015. We are a nonprofit volunteer group and we came together to see what we could do to help preserve the Gary Oak trees that we have, to do community outreach and education, and to plant new trees so that when this old trees start to go, which they are, um, when we start to lose that canopy, we've got new trees to take their place. Also in 2015, it was the 100 year anniversary of Oak Harbor and the city celebrated by taking some basically fallow land. This land is on the corner of Fakama Road and Highway 20, uh, which is a designated crash zone for the military and cannot be a park. They took that land and planted 100 oaks. Later on, more, tree, more oak trees were planted and so there's over 250 trees now standing in that field. But what a wonderful tribute to the anniversary of the city. And people who do drive by or come in, that is part of the entrance to Oak Harbor or drive out of Oak Harbor, see those oak trees. In 2020, our group was responsible for the honorary designation of Southeast 8th Avenue as the Avenue of the Oaks. So now all the sign toppers have, all the signs have this topper on them. The year of the Oak is this year, 2021. And so um, it's the 170th anniversary of the naming of Oak Harbor. And we will be celebrating as much we can during this pandemic. Um, looking for ways that we can embrace this beautiful tree in, in our community and what we can do to sort of toot that horn and make a big deal about it. This photo here is of a Gary Oak tree out on Monroe Landing Road, uh, belongs to a farm, the Rector Farm. Avis Rector is the lady who gave me permission to go out in her field and, and photograph her trees. And this is one of two ginormous Gary Oak trees. So how will you choose to celebrate the year of the oak? Starting March through June of 2021 is when we're going to really focus the, the activities. And um, you will need to visit our website, www.oh.garyoaksociety.org to find out more. So we're busy now, still nurturing generations, future generations of trees and oak arborites. And that's it. Thanks for your time. Um, for, and again, you can visit our website for more information about Gary Oak Trees and current volunteer projects. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye. <laughs>